All right, what's up YouTube? What's up Twitch? Let me make sure my stream is working, and it is. This is FJ, and we got, of course, Deji, our weekly uh, core here for Bratcast. This is Bratcast number 57. And I feel like we should just like kind of talk about what we got going on individually, sort of like what we're feeling. Let me just post this in my stories that we're live now. And uh, along with that, I think... You know, I've I've uh, had discussions with our our circle of friends about Kevin Samuels, Abba, and Preach. Kevin Samuels is like supposedly a dating guru. Uh, kind of gives it gives it to you, gives you harsh truths. And kind of uh, he focuses on kind of on people who complain about the dating scene or maybe they're struggling, and he kind of like lays it down like really really tough. And Abba and Preach are YouTubers that react to content, controversial, and they have their own views, which a lot of people seem to resonate with. And I watched a two-hour... still in the middle. I'm almost done. It's one hour, 49 minutes already. It's a two-hour, 17-minute podcast where they talk about, is there a problem with modern women and men? Uh, Abba and Preach reacting with Kevin Samuels, or, or pod, uh, interviewing Kevin Samuels. Tom, what's up, man? This, we're just talking about, we're going to catch up kind of about like each other's lives. going to talk about what we're, what we're up to. And then at the same time, again, I guess we're going to segue back into like, I guess the dating scene, what women kind of expect from men nowadays in today's dating scene, what men kind of expect from women in today's dating scene. Uh, but yeah, uh, welcome Tom as well. Uh, Deji, man, do you want to start? I heard Kevin Samuels. So yeah, do you know? I'm intrigued. Who, you know who that is? You you've listened oh, to yeah. some of his stuff? Okay, okay. Oh. All right. So, uh, Deji, yeah, you can start, man. What what what's, what you got going on with fire pit and everything? <laughs> fire pit. All right. So you know, um, every Wednesday, uh, me and two other musicians, we have a live stream where we DJ on Twitch, and we started that in October. And, you know, um, we stream out of my friend's uh, apartment um, at Liberty Village. Cool. And we've been steadily incrementing, you know, a following. And last Saturday, um, we had our first, like, in-person live show. So that was in the, the party room of his condo. Sick. And it was, you know, we were, yeah, thanks, man. We were planning it for, like, I don't know, like a week. And... We didn't, because we're all like busy and shit, so we didn't throw up any sort of promotion literally to like six hours before. I remember getting <laughs> or, that not, okay, message. Maybe that's an exaggeration. <laughs> maybe like maybe like 10 hours before. Yeah. And it was dope. We still had like a bunch of people show up. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, so like for the next one, we're just going to. What are you thinking? Like quarterly, like, monthly? Like yeah. what's up? Maybe bi monthly. Bi monthly? Nice. You know, yeah. Monthly. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get like a couple shows in there. Is but that what's going on? Okay. Like what about yeah, music, um, personal stuff? Like you got projects? You, I know you came out with yeah. a single recently too. Yeah, I came out with a single. Um, was on a feature that got uh, some complex magazine coverage, so that was pretty cool. Nice man. And the feature, the girl I'm working with, is actually nominated for a Juno. So I'm on a song with a Juno nominated artist. Hey, so that's yo, cool. that's sick. You know? Good for you. Yeah, dude. so I was like, oh, shit. like, nice. it's pretty cool. Um, are, you, are you working on album or just like? Singles? Yeah, working on like. Okay. Working on like two. Okay. Right now, two collab album, and then like some like, you know, personal stuff. Um, then there's an artist I'm working with called Luna L. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of stuff. Creative maybe. direction right now, so I'm just busy man and then oh yeah i just what i'm i'm doing management in the long-term care facility as my full-time job that's okay. yeah that, that part is also going on yeah so that's that's the daily grind to sustain the dream right basically yeah is that what it is no yeah. is that its function for you yeah yeah really but then at really. the same time the job itself is like holistic oh. and like well, it's, I'm sure it's grueling, but I mean, like, you're making a difference even with just the grind. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's I cool, mean, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is, but I feel like just since COVID, everything has just been, like, 
hell. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like long term care, acute care, like hospital, whatever. It's already like there's already a certain level of high stress that you get when you go into those professions. Same with, I guess, like police work, firefighting, like there's certain careers that, you know, but it's like when there's a constantly evolving like health crisis yeah and you're kind of at the forefront of like dealing with the brunt of all of these changes and you have to do it steadily like for like two three years and it's like some unprecedented shit it's like yo there's a lot of people quitting the profession right now you know still so yeah bro that's why there's so much like funding to like get people back in like to, there's all these programs to like get psws to transition to like registered nurses and then get like registered practical nurses to transition into registered nurses because they've been, been losing people mm-hmm. you know but anyway thank god <laughs> do you feel like in the last month since you know the beginning of march things are supposed to be normalizing again has there been a shift at all in terms of your workload in terms of your lifestyle because of you know the covid acceptance i'm gonna call it (laughs) yeah we went into outbreak last week like a facility white outbreak like today i learned oh because we we swabbed everyone two days ago on my floor yeah and we had we already had like 10 po- 10 positive cases yesterday today i literally had another 10 i was just like what the fuck okay damn all right it's like insane and it's like the visitors bringing people bringing the shit in because in our facility everyone is still masked up right mm-hmm. so it's like visitors who don't necessarily need as many um you know they removed a lot of the vaccine policy shit so it's like they've just been coming in you know so an hour we're at fucking outbreak so did you get COVID yet? No. Me? No. I've only had a false positive. So knock wood. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking dodging that shit, yo. <laughs> Fuck that. All right. All right. So you got it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember you were fucked up. No, I got sick, but I... It was like... From where I assumed I got it from, when they tested, none. all of them were negative. So... I think it was just a cold. It could have been a mild flu for five days. There was one day in that five days where, yeah, I was pretty knocked out. But by the fifth day, I was fine. I never tested, though, because I had nowhere to go. I was just isolating at home naturally anyway. I was. It was December, so it was holidays. I didn't have any work. I just stayed home. And apparently after five days, if, you're, if your symptoms subside, you're good. You don't even need to get tested you can stop isolating and so that's what i did (laughs) yeah so i might have had it might have not might i might not but uh, i got my third vax beginning of january just because i had a a flight in february that i wanted to make sure i was okay with and just in case you know like i knew i was gonna work some more in the new year you know i know other a bunch of people still getting covid i've been shooting events weddings and bar mitzvahs i seem to be doing okay knock on wood i, I don't want to get anything now but i i'm all right i'm all right but yeah man tom what are you up to these days dude what are you doing what do you got going on dude fucking studying for finals and business is crazy here in london it's uh, it's fucked up sir so what are you <laughs> so. studying what's what's your what's your final in Look at all my fucking notes, man. Fucking organic chemistry, so. Organic chemistry, all right. Uh, yeah, my, oh. I got my finals next week, and then, and then I'm done. Or, Co-op, but bi- business has, has, has jumped in the last four weeks for me, so it's been a grind, man. Real People estate. are spending a shit ton of money here. But, Real estate, yeah. right? That's sick, then. Yeah. Then you're doing I good. I just sold my first house this year, man. It's been a grind. Hey, congrats, yeah, so. dude. Yeah, congratulations, That's man. That's it's, it's, it's not as easy as it used to be. Yeah, people always see that. Uh, you know, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but there's a lot of competition, man. You got to win those. You got to win those deals. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, it's it is what it is. But I have uh, enough work for the next couple of months that will 
pad me up pretty good. So that will be good. Sick. Okay. But like, just like you said about the whole thing about the COVID thing. Yeah. I'm noticing now people are getting sick again. Even my friends, a couple of friends already said that, you know, some of them are sick or their daughters are sick. So it's around. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And they're all vaccinated. So hopefully it doesn't last too long for them. Yeah. Like I, so mandate for the mask lifted March 21. So I'm, yeah. the events I'm shooting now, it's optional. Uh, as a vendor, yes, I still wear my mask for the most part when I'm in like a client's house. But when it, when I get to the venue and it's like it's hot and like I feel a little, I don't know what it is, but confident enough to take my mask off for longer durations because I want to breathe easier while I'm working. I don't want my glasses to fog up. And, you know, again, I've been lucky. I've, I've, I've been okay, you know? And I, I'm assuming no one, I guess, at these events has it. If you if they're having symptoms, I, they better not be coming to these events because <laughs> they're not supposed to. Uh, today, yeah. I shot in a synagogue. Uh, it was a bat mitzvah. Oh, that's interesting. Photos. <laughs> yeah, I do these. I do these a lot. And, uh, yeah, the, the rabbi at the synagogue was like, yeah, we are a mask on facility you got i had to wear my mask in it like it was mandatory or, or maybe not mandatory but they were in for i don't know if they're enforcing it but they're advising it so i guess yeah establishments still can like do that it's up to them mm -hmm. up to their discretion i respected it of course i think it's fine you want me to wear a mask i'll wear a mask um but yeah like way busier now like i i am so busy <laughs> which is good like i'm happy that i got lots of work i'm stressed it's a good stress though because like i'm busy like i got i got work to do i'm gonna i have money to make so it's good like i my focus has shifted you know from like i had a lot of time to think about things i had a lot of time to play cod i had a lot of time to like <laughs> make youtube videos snowboard think about dating and trying to find someone on apps and now it's like okay i gotta work today and then tomorrow i gotta work and then the next day i gotta work and then like it's like and i work until i have to go to sleep because like i have editing to do at home and like i i'm behind right now actually so it's like it's good editing? yeah i'm behind on my i'm doing editing for other studios that's holding me back from the editing i need to do for my own work so it's like i gotta get stuff done let me ask you a question mm -hmm. so like Right now, right, the pace of like how everything's moving with business for you, mm. is this how it was like prior to pandemic? Um, I got lucky this year to be, I got introduced to another studio. Like, so before the pandemic, I was primarily working for one studio and then I would take on some uh, freelance work from, from a couple others. But okay. when the pandemic hit and my main studio got really quiet, I opened myself up to do freelance work for anybody. Like, and my network at that point had already expanded throughout, you know, the eight years that I've been working with the, the, my main studio, the main guy I work for. So okay. when I said, yeah, guys, I'm looking for work, whatever you got, just send it my way and I'll let you know if I'm available. And through the pandemic it can it didn't keep me busy that's for sure but it gave me some work but now that it's after pandemic yeah. and they're all getting busy so now i'm getting now i'm sourcing work from four different studios whereas it used to just be one you know so that's why i'm okay. busy yeah um this so is this busy. this year's ramping up to be my best year it should be my best year in business so Provided things don't shut down again and people cancel and like move stuff again, that would be. Oh, that man, would suck. I yeah. <laughs> I hope okay, so good. okay, so like you said, um, and this is an, the ideal situation you want is things not slowing down, like things going at this pace. Things right? need to keep up. Yeah, things need to keep going. Yeah. What about things even like escalating? Uh, escalating? You mean numbers? Like. Yeah, just in general, like things even just like you're getting more work and like, you know, your business is like expanding and you're busier. Would you want that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. for the Hell last, yeah. for, I, I knew I, I could always take on more work before the pandemic. And then okay. 
during the pandemic it was like i was just like desperate for work so i am out of shape I, i'm out of like mental work shape and like physical work shape so i i know this will be good for me to like get back into it like for me to to like this is the year for me to really push and see how far i can go because if this goes well then even next year should be even better it should even be, should be even better so the reason the reason i was asking that is because you mentioned that you've noticed that daily things you were able to do kind of no longer exist right like yeah. you don't really play pod anymore you know like you're not really on dating apps anymore so like the reason i'm asking that is because i've noticed right now like we at work we're going through a transition right like our company just got um acquired by another company so the last three weeks have been insanely busy for me right and i've noticed my personal time has like evaporated like <laughs> yeah. that's why i haven't been playing cod and shit like and i'm just starting to think about that whole like work-life balance shit right yep because it'll be a thing <laughs> if we if like we keep going at this pace right and we don't have like the actual tangible time to like have a life mm -hmm. what does that mean in like the next like five years because that's what's gonna happen like because i've noticed yo i've just been working for like the last three years like non-stop yeah especially because it's been pandemic shit like i've just noticed 2019 was like this for me at least right 19 so yeah yeah so like going forward like if business just keeps getting better and better and better because like we're we're like older right now right so mm -hmm. we don't necessarily have the you know like when you're in your 20s you're in school you're in this you're in that you're meeting like a whole bunch of people and involved in a whole lot of activities but like when you get to a certain point it really just be work yeah man you know so like that's what i'm starting to kind of experience right now which is why i'm making a very concerted effort to like do as much shit not related to work as possible oh. even though like for me though like, well they always I'm, say I'm a... sorry go ahead. yeah just like you said you're working a lot and i think sometimes once you find that rhythm when you can handle the work then you will find the time to have your extracurriculars because you do need like you said your extracurriculars otherwise you will go pretty mental if, if you become a workaholic but uh, Deji, you're counting the music as work too, right? Yeah, a little bit, cause like, okay. that's not necessarily like free time shit for me. That's like work as yeah. well. Yeah, my YouTube stuff you know? is work for me. Like, it's <laughs> people think it's like, oh yeah, you get to do fun things with YouTube or whatever. I'm like, nah, it's like it's part of my business. Like, I yeah. I have to edit yeah. that too. I have to film that too. I have to I have to script it and all that. Like, man. It was the first people time I actually, were, I actually rely on it. Or I actually depend it. Yeah, I actually wrote out a script for the first time. I I, did, I don't do that. In the, I haven't done that in the past where I, I kind of wing it and then I just, uh, what's the word? I just, uh, I just cut. I just cut all of the the mistakes out, and I, it makes for like a really smooth audio. But you can see all my oh, jump, yeah, yeah. all my jump cuts. You can see all my jump, jump cuts. cuts. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but my last video I had to do for promo, I actually typed out a script like yeah, so same. i and i was like oh my god like i've never done that before it was it was cool it was it made for a very seamless recording but i mean the writing out the script was work like that took more time a question where, where did you read this script script off of uh luckily it was just a voiceover so i had footage of action footage and then i just had to record oh, audio nice and I, I said the audio over action footage. It, um, so I was just reading off like my play memory. by play. Kind okay. of. It, it was like a commercial. It was. It looked like a commercial. Like there's footage, stock footage. I could, I'd say stock footage, but I took it, okay. and then I was my okay. voiceover. Um, okay. Because I have. I kind of have an issue like that because I have a show I'm working on right now. But mm -hmm. the first episode or whatever, I wrote every single word like verbatim that i'm gonna say right uh -huh. but i'm live on camera and i have to like read the shit and i have to like scroll because it's like a long yeah. thing right yeah so i'm wondering if it's even worth it to do that because i still want it to be organic but at the same time i want to talk about like, very like, very uh, teleprompting words. yeah yeah it sounds like that there's apps i'm sure there's apps dude where you could like there's probably a button that's like a hot key so then it can scroll for you while you're speaking you can 
you can put it on the screen that's like right on where your camera is so then you're still looking forward like a regular prompt teleprompter you know like yeah i gotta figure that out yeah i'm using a wider lens today because i will be doing more review stuff on like clothes and stuff so i don't know uh clothes well yeah just because i i i did like a an under armor haul i bought a, uh, i bought a shit ton are you, of under armor are you, are you like are you the kevin News, are you the kevin samuels now <laughs> no all right so <laughs> yeah so i think this is a cool segue because guys okay the high value man have you heard of that yeah i just saw your the title oh. of this episode yeah what did, what, what did I call it again? Uh, Catching up with high value men. <laughs> oh God! What's and what's hypergamy? Uh, your girls hate that shit. <laughs> no, no. Apparently, girls. like, is do they do they hate the term? Yeah, like, I guess because like the whole Kevin Samuels thing. They mentioned Kevin Samuels a lot. They're yeah, like, yeah. Oh God, dude calls himself a high value. If I heard, if I find a guy that calls himself a high value man, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's click- so what do you guys think my title my title is clickbait uh, okay so this is this is the first time i've ever heard of him uh i i'm surprised i had not oh, come really? across his oh, stuff before harsh. yeah apparently oh, i mean he's, he's been around and he's he's harsh it's he's funny his content is funny because he yeah. gives it to you know these people subscribe and like sign up to be to meet with him you know whatever on a phone call or on a str- on a on a zoom or whatever it's a lot of women that are going to him women too and then he just chops them up a lot of women <laughs> he just he chops yeah. them up but it's men too i've seen clips of men and women but he chops them up in a way yep. where i feel like it's like yo harsh truth man like you need to hear this you need to hear this not because i think i don't like you but because i want to like chop you down but because i think you need to realize i i think it's on the border of harsh truths to to address entitlement at least the clips that I've been hearing from Abba and Preach that he took from Kevin Samuels. As in, like, he's not out there to try and change society. He, I, It looks more like he's been observing society and he's telling people, this is how it is. It's, I'm not trying to change it. This is how it is. That's that's what it comes off as, at least from, from what I heard. So, it sounds like that Tupac quote. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm trying to inspire the next. He's, yeah, he's got some good stuff, man. I, I've known about him for. <laughs> oh, he's got good stuff. You, about a year now. So you agree with him? You agree oh, with him? Oh yeah, his... I've been listening. Okay. On a lot of things, yeah, for sure. Okay, so apparently, okay, again, forgive me. I don't have all the like proper sources, and you guys can check out YouTube. Look up Kevin Samuels, Abba, and just Preach. check out YouTube. Yeah, there's absolutely. A, there's a ton of content from him, but. From what I've understood, yeah. in in the standard of today, a high value man is is, <laughs> is a guy who makes six figures. First, first and foremost, the value oh, is shit. evaluated by money. Uh, so it, by that metric alone, I can't be classified as a high value man. <laughs> I, I, don't, I do not make six figures. Uh, I mean, that's the goal, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, that's everybody's goal, but. I think it's more so the fact that, well, from what I've noticed about us, I, I knew that too. Like, I knew, Tom, that, like, you're back in the gym, you're back in jiu-jitsu. I knew you were real estate. I knew you're back in school. Like, the focus is you, like, bettering yeah. you. And Deji, I knew too. Like, we're all, yeah. like, you know, like, you had, you're multifaceted. You have a, a bunch of different things on your plate. And it's not just to, like, you know, improve your wallet, but it's, like, your, your like, quality of life and even just, like, your 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 art and your like your skills and like your talents to nurture you not to just develop you as you know monetarily or financially but also as a human being socially maturity and all that and i've been working on that too for like the past freaking three four years therapy and like uh mindfulness and like being more accountable practicing empathy and then i'm also trying to push my business and like trying to work out diff- uh work on different aspects of my media like streaming now youtube uh videos and trying to be like i guess it's more like trying to live more of a life like the influencer almost you know like i'm i'm trying to gear that way and at the same time balancing photography videography working and still you know being a good person i think and i think those things combined for all of us each as as individuals i i that's 
that's where I see the value. The fact that we are not sitting and complaining about shit <laughs> that's not working for us. We understand maybe we have our own struggles in, in certain aspects of our lives, but we haven't like given up. Like we're, we're like, you know what? This needs to get better, so we're going to work on it. And then this needs to get better, we're gonna, so we're going to work on it. And here we are every Thursday. This is not, this is, we don't get paid for this. <laughs> like, and yet we, not we yet. No, well, not yet, but we, we've established like this, this, uh, routine because it's, because I feel like we've, we've just made the commitment and we've, and we found, uh, we found an, um, what's the word productivity and like value in, in this regiment. Because I feel like I, I want, honestly, man, this podcast, I know it's so random and sometimes we don't even have subjects until like five minutes before we start, <laughs> but I think we have like thought processes that will still lend well to people who listen, who, who might not have that same kind of mo self motivation. Maybe some people who just want to, who just, if they come across this and they hear our perspectives. They might resonate with it and might agree with it, or maybe they it just causes them to think about maybe things they don't agree with, just to mm -hmm. to reevaluate their own. And I think, dude, like we have things valuable to share with people, and that's why I like this. I like this format. It's it's like it's raw, uncut. We can say whatever we want. It's it. There's no bias, kind of like in you know we're not trying to sell to a certain uh, crowd. We're just saying how we feel, and I and I trusted, you know. I that's why I I'm I'm cool with you guys coming every week because I trust where it's there's where it's coming from. You know, you're not just gonna spew stuff to for controversy. You're not just gonna, you know what I mean. I feel like it's coming from yeah. a good place, and we're very different. I think uh, the three of us too are different. Like we're different, but at the same time, we all hold the same kind of value. Where we're like, we're not gonna settle for who we are. We're always gonna try and be better. Right? Yeah, I think that's important. Can't like allow yourself to stagnate. If you're not, there's a quote that sums it up perfectly, but it was something like, if you're not growing, you're like dying or some shit. Like, and I, I don't know, in my, in my personal life, I realized that I hit a certain point where I got really comfortable mm. and then. I didn't realize that that was not a good thing. I was just like, yeah, all right, I got to figure it out. Let me just chill out. And then you realize like, oh no, ev like everyone is still like trying to like evolve, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to do that or you're going to stagnate and die. So One I don't thing know, right now I feel like I have um, an active like desire to just like keep evolving. Yeah. That's sick, man. And like, the way you said that, like you were comfortable and it was a bad thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna address that because th I went through that. Like, shared something with you on uh, Facebook. I, I don't know how to send it. Okay, okay. Kevin Samuels. Okay. Um, but yeah, nine nine years ago is when I kind of like uh, realized that it wasn't that I was comfortable with life. Comfortable. I think comfort's fine. Comfort is a good thing to strive for. Uh, it's I think I think it's a good thing to have, but complacency was what was holding me back. So there's a I think there's a difference between being comfortable and being complacent. So uh, like, yeah, I was I was heavily complacent in like my early thirties. I thought I had, I thought I knew shit. I thought I had it all figured out. And I was like, I was just gonna coast to whatever life was gonna bring me because it, I was so, I was so used to my routine at that point, and it was lazy. It was lazy, and it was like, I, I didn't take. I, I, yeah, I remember. I, I wasn't holding myself accountable for my own mistakes and my own shortcomings. And complacency kills, man. It, it, it will deteriorate you as a person. And it was tough during the pandemic for the first year. I'd say 2020 was kind of rough because. We were all kind of forced to just wait there. And I remember that too. I kept saying in a lot, in a number of podcasts, I was like, I just feel like I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm just waiting for things to change so I can do things again. When I realized eventually, maybe by 2021, I'm like, this is the year I could pursue all the things I don't get to pursue because of work. Like, 
that's when I started streaming. That's when I started like really pushing YouTube again. And I'm like, wow, I have other venues that I could pursue that I never had time for before because of work. I had no excuse. I had no excuse to like not take advantage of the time, right? But of course, you know, I'm not to say like I, I was perfect. I mean, I complained a lot. I, I was super lonely. I was very unmotivated and I uh, did, I stopped working out. Like I, I gained weight and I lost my fitness and all that. There's obviously there's struggles all the time, but. Oh, I, that's so yeah. interesting that you said, sorry, you were about to say something, Tom? No, no, I, I do agree with what he's saying. Like these last two years, you know, it's just like it kind of put everyone in a, in a stalemate, I guess. Right. Yeah. Uh, we got a little, I got fucking lazy over the, uh, uh, you know, especially in that 2020. Fuck, man, I developed a pretty good drinking habit. <laughs> and video game habit, because there's nothing fucking. Oh to do. my God, I played that's so much. That's how I found out about Warzone. <laughs> so much God. Yeah, that, I, that's how I first discovered, you know, and then 2021, there was a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. Mm -hmm. And now we're in 2022. And I don't, I think for sure, like you just said, you know, you don't, you want to work. But then you also want to balance out your uh, extracurriculars that are fun. You know, when Deji's making his music, that's not really fun because it's work and people depend on that. So, you know, you're doing it for other people where fun is you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. So you got to balance that out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you said waiting, you felt like you were just waiting. Yeah. I, had a, I went down to like an interesting thought rabbit hole the other day because I was thinking about like people... People that are in jail, people that are like, um, like brain dead. There's this element of like being present in life, but not being able to live it, right? Okay. So it's like that's something similar that kind of a lot of people went through. It's like, okay, you're you're existing, but you can't do anything. I can you know? see that in prison for sure. Brain dead, you don't know. Prison for sure, <laughs> and that prison, and it's uh. Maybe not brain dead. Sorry. Uh, maybe um, I think Bob's know, in a coma, like comatose. Uh, maybe someone that's like a like a paraplegic, like okay. like a quadriplegic. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That's like still alive, but like can't do anything. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then you think yeah. about jail, and that's compounded by the fact that you have criminals around you. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, what is life at that point? Because you're alive, but like. At that point, you're just like waiting and you're waiting surrounded by like horrible people. And then, you know, if you're quadriplegic, you're just waiting all the time. Like you're literally just waiting. Yep. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's so, rough. Yeah. It's, bro, that's fucking rough. I I think like, I, just you guys are, you know, how old are you now, Noi? Are you not? You're I'm turning 40, you're bro. Not 40 yet, are you? I'm turning 40 this year. Oh my god! I just found some pictures of us like, like a couple of days ago, man. When we were younger. When I was and, like uh, probably. But 16. it's true. Like I think. <laughs> oh no! I think you were like 12. Oh, 12 gee, or something. okay. 10, 10 or 10 or 11. Yeah. Okay. It was one of the Christmases, but uh, I, I think like you know when you get at our age for sure, like you'll find out sometimes that there's going to always be a lot of forks in the road. You know, nothing's ever really concrete, as we know. Yeah. So you just got to be willing, I guess, to go down those roads. Because if we could make the road straight the whole way, then we'd never be, we'd have no problems. But yeah, that's definitely not life. Did There's you always get something coming up? Just did you have a plan? Like when you were in high school, your expectations? What did, did you have? Like a kind of like a an outline of what you wanted to hit by 20, 25, 30, 35? Hell yeah. Nothing nothing went to plan. Nothing went some to plan. Some things did, but some things didn't. You know? Yeah, man. <laughs> you know? I thought by 25 then, I'd you be know, married, like, dude. I was, I was, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I was partying hard still at 25, so that wasn't going to happen. But, uh, you know, I got I got my real estate license and did a lot of business. And then, you know, you buy your first property and then you think you find a good woman. But then I got the property and not the woman, so it's 50-50. Oh. All kinds of stuff. Did you? I like, mean, life, life is short, but it does go on a long time. Were you close to like marriage at some point? I don't, I don't even know that. No. Oh no? no. Okay. 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 You were never really marriage. looking nothing, for no, it. I, 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 for like nothing. Okay. okay. No, I wasn't opposed to it, but it just never worked out. Never, and it, okay. And 
is the option still there? Yeah, I don't want that. See, that was like another question. Remember, when, when I heard a, a girl says like they don't want to have kids or they want to get married, that kind of takes away some of my options. So I'm not really into that either, even though I don't know yet. Yeah. But I don't want that option taken away. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Do you want me to play this clip so we react to it? Should I Should I do that? Yeah, go oh. ahead. Yeah, yeah. If I said it to you just so you can, but it's fucking hilarious. Is it long? <laughs> no, it's about a minute. Okay, let me let me share it uh, here. Gotta close. Just this. some of the savagery and how women are. Yeah. All right. Uh, Expectations. Be all right. Twenty six seconds. All right. Let's let's react to this. I don't know how to make it any bigger, guys. But here we go. Oh, this is on Kevin Samuels in Fresh and Fit. And man, I'm not a fan of Fresh and Fit, but let's see what this is expectations because Maybe. if you're look if you're dating you know above the one percent then you might get somebody that's not gonna fucking cheat right Maybe. well hold on and see the notion of this whole aim lower this is why when women you say this i don't think you realize that people what when i don't think a lot of times you ladies understand when you say aim lower you're in that lower too yikes where's the freaking button i don't Double aim silence. lower i'm not <laughs> Just silence. I love that. <laughs> Just the silence. They didn't know what to say. Yeah. They're... Okay. Okay, I mean... When you aim lower... Uh, oh, what am I hearing? What am I hearing right now? Oh, it's this video. My bad. Okay, so... From... Okay. Okay. Uh... I've been having a, a conversation with Paul. Paul, uh... Also, uh, right, I guess an occasional uh, attendee here at the podcast. He's also part of Bradcast. And he is a psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, and, you know, he, I, he's saying that he, he doesn't really see um, the message in, with Kevin Samuels about, like, um, trying to change like the dating game like or sorry that the, the way kevin samuels has perceived the dating scene is is kind of like old school and things have changed in in uh yeah. in modern times and um and I, I i can see why he can perceive it that way and, and to big you up paul it's like he's a doctor <laughs> Like, so it's like, uh, he won't have that struggle, not just because of his profession, but of course there's obviously, yeah, he's got good, strong mental health. He works out. He's, he's a, he's a high value man. <laughs> you know, Paul is a high value man. <laughs> uh, and yeah, he's under, he's under 40 and he, I'm sure he's making six figs as a doc. So, so what, what he was saying too, Tom, like, uh, you were, we were like talking about her age or whatever. And he's like. For we for women these days, they're saying for like who who seek who, who sought after high value men, meaning high income men. Generally, men won't hit that kind of income until later in life. Like they're not gonna hit six figures until maybe 40, 40 to fifty years old, when they start to really hit six figures. You know, with like a career or with like uh, you know working your way up the corporate ladder or whatever it is. Uh, owning your business and then expanding your business to the point where you can make that much. So, uh, and then you're saying to Tom, like women who might not want to have kids versus, uh, or they, they don't want to get married or they do want to get married right away. Is that what you're saying? Like you're coming across. Well, if they don't want to get married or don't want to have kids, that's like I said, I don't want that option taken away yet. Right, right. So, so, but in, in, in that, find, and in yeah, that so sense, one of those things. in that sense, these expectations, you know, on on the on a woman's side who wants a man who makes more money than they do, so they can be taken care of and provided for. Generally, it for for that income to be there, the man is older. But then the man's expectations of like, okay, well, I'm working to try and get to this level where I can earn six figures or whatever and be like this high value man. I'm trying to develop myself. But they don't want the option of kids and marriage to be taken away yet. So what does that do? Then that means our age group goes 
downward. Like our focus of the age group goes younger. For the for the females to be wanting more money, their 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 focus for that to be achieved generally, their age group goes older. But then for a man to still have his options for kids and maybe marriage, the age group focus goes younger. So then you get this divide that you you see in today's society of these. I guess you would call them power men, but I guess in the way Kevin Samuels will call them high value men, being with younger women who don't make that as 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 much money or but they're but they're cool with that because they they I guess they've accepted a, a different role in that relationship. Whereas Paul, because he is by but I guess as a default, because of the, the path he's taken, who he's already developed himself to be a high value man, and he's only in his 30s, I think, <laughs> pretty sure. Um, he doesn't have to feel like he is, he, he's being limited with this age expectation, with this income expectation, because he's met all of it. He's already checked off all the boxes. So, I mean, great for you, Paul, man. That's awesome. <laughs> it's like, that's a great place to be in. But his view is that it can, uh, what he said is like, he, he doesn't have to view relationships as transactional. Uh, he's still in the mindset that intimacy is more important and like a connection between two people, love, like actual, like seeking out love and like uh, good compatibility, uh, chemistry compatibility and like shared values and vision like all of that stuff just tuned in is there a definition for high value women uh yeah we can See, we can, we can google that, that daddy is that like that's old school just right real, what what is old just school real, just real quick FJ, well it just uh, goes just you know what people want that's still pretty old school in at the end of the day right okay okay that has that's never changed sorry yeah and i think that's what i was just about to say like actually you said in today's society but i feel like that's been since time you know which the love part? Yeah, the, the yeah, like uh, just what you mentioned. All those uh, that list you just mentioned. That's kind of been always been. Okay, I think people are having problems now in this time finding those things. No, so so that that's a good thing too. I mean, I just saw this in the near the end of this uh, two hour interview with Kevin Samuels Abba, where he's talking about the 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 search for a romantic relationship, like the true love. Yeah, it's always been romanticized and fantasized. It's in been movies. It's in like Disney. But if you think about, I don't know, maybe past ancestors, relationship, really? met, like whatever. It like even like before our time, before modern era, before uh, industrialization, where it was like the the imperial times, or like kings and kingdoms, or even before that, that uh, it it was it was always like more it was more animalistic like the animal kingdom where you choose a, a male who's strong who can provide who can protect and in in human race that involves money and that involves status so that you you can yeah it, it's it was it was less about love although that's what we see in movies they'll have movies back in imperial times they'll have movies in, in olden days and they'll try to say that love is still there, you know, like uh, all those, yeah, all those blockbuster movies. I forget the, I'm thinking Heath Ledger or whatever, like A Knight's Tale or whatever. I don't know. Um, but it's, but really what happened back then was arrangements, trying to get like kingdoms or whatever and like land and dowries and all that stuff. It was transactional then. So you're saying we were seeking love the whole time, yeah? Because it's romantic. It's like it's what we want. It's what we think is ideal. But really, what's happened? What's actually been happening since a long time ago has been that transactional looking thing, where the man is like the the breadwinner, goes to work. And I I'm, I know, guys. I know. I'm not saying this. I am feminist. Trust me. Like I am not pro. The woman like should stay at home and whatever. Say something, like, so I'll, I know I'll say it after. this sounds I'll like it's it anti-feminism, but I'm not saying this is what I believe it should be. But it just from the more I heard from this Kevin Samuels thing is the more he was just observing what's actually been happening. He's not trying to change the game or mold and or like mold the game to like 
guys, it's not feminism, it's not 50-50, it's not equal rights, whatever, it's this. He's not trying to change it back, he's just still looking at it, and it's like, this is still what I see. Like, it, things haven't changed. I'm not saying he's right, completely, but that's what he's doing. He's, he's just, like, uh, perceiving. Uh, before anyone says anything, Day Day did uh, type in the chat, and I just want to read his, his comment. He asked, what is the definition of a high-value woman? And then he found, I don't know what his source was, he says, high value women understand that being an agreeable, pleasant partner makes them more attractive and valuable. They also understand that if they want to walk with a high value man, they'll need to relinquish control of the frame of the relationship to him and trust him to be the leader. Relinquish control. Okay. Well, like again, to to that. this is like that. <laughs> this this definition, <laughs> Dede. I'm yeah. I, I'm guessing you're gonna get this in the context of like a Kevin Samuels definition. I, I mean, you're gonna ask any woman that now. That's not how they're gonna define that. <laughs> like, it's, it's from Google. Oh. Yeah, but what's the what's the source though, Dede? I, I bet you it's something related to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I, we're we're kind of going over that part. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Just like what uh, we said was like. Here, here's something sexist, and I'll just say this right now. But I find that why we're having a lot of these trials, like just you said, going back even 40, 50 years, right? The man had to be the breadwinner. The man had to do all that, do the, you know. I find we've empowered women. Yeah. You know, we 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 they've got jobs. They don't. We teach our gal pals not to put up with bullshit when they date men. We teach them, you know, you don't like that, fucking get rid of them. So I mean, part of it's our fucking fault too. What kudos to the women, but. <laughs> Them having more options and power, jobs, careers, hey, that you know they're they're they're, they're you know the the playing the fields uh, got a little bit more complicated. Is it good or bad? I, I just think it is what it is, right? But if you go back fifty years, women weren't voting, women weren't fucking working. Man, they invented the six pack just because the women could carry a six pack. Not really. That's what you know, like things like that. Yeah, that's why the six pack was invented. Okay. Yeah, so okay. the women could carry it home. For the husbands yeah but now women have power which is great you know they they're working they're making their own money they're living independently sometimes you know they're so like you know yeah. so that's why i think there's always a clash i th well i think or why things it's yeah. not it's not even like they have every right to that i think or even the entitlement no. to it i think equal i do believe in equal opportunity if if that is what they want they can they deserve to get it and yeah. if uh, not just deserve to get it like give, not given to them they can earn it they can like just like we can like we yeah any anything that we want out of life we have to exactly. earn we have to earn it with hard work you know so that's why that that definition right that, that what's a strong or a high value woman she has to give up a little bit of power knowing trusting in the guy yeah but we teach women yeah don't put up with bullshit man like how many gal pals you have like yeah fuck that guy get rid of him you okay. know we we don't want, you know, we teach women to be strong. I think, uh, I think you, because, okay, so I've asked, and this has been, like, this answer has not changed between men and women across the board, and I've asked at least 20 people this question. It's, if you had the opportunity to drive for the rest of your life versus being driven for the rest of your life, like, what would you pick? Mm. Every single guy I've asked has been like, wow. I'm driving. Yeah. Right, every yeah. single girl I wanna drive. Like, wants to be yeah, driven, be driven <laughs> right? And I think that's an interesting oh, thing. Shit. oh, day they said yeah. being driven. What, yeah. bro? <laughs> no, no, but listen, listen, this is being like you literally will never have the opportunity to sit behind the wheel ever again, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, uh, every girl was like, Oh, <laughs> it's okay, well, you know, maybe he's an exception, right? Yeah, he says, okay. maybe I guess he's an exception. I mean, there are there are but, well, there are people well, like that for sure where. That it's because maybe driving to them has become like the the it's how you relate driving in your life has become a chore has become laborious you know some people have a life where driving to work every day in traffic is laborious and it's not enjoyable like i i took a survey oh, recently I drive all the time I'm yeah I, I drive <laughs> i drive all the time and i always yeah. i would rather always drive like yeah sometimes it's nice to be driven if i'm tired or whatever like that but like uh driving to me has not been associated with a negative part of my life because uh you know it's i get to choose where i want to go and it's like i have that freedom now where i can go whenever i want to go 
Um, I, I don't have to like wait for Uber. I don't have to like take public transit. I just go whenever I want to go. And that's how I've related driving in my life. But I can see how, oh yeah, self-drive Tesla. I mean, even if that exists, Day Day, I bet you a lot of men would still override and want to drive sometimes if it's legal. As long as it remains legal, like people are going to want to have control of their own vehicle sometimes sometimes not all the time if i'm just going to work and it's rush hour yeah man i'm putting on auto like that's auto drive i'm not i'm not gonna like s sit in traffic that'd be crazy man if that ever happens oh it's gonna self driving oh. does that mean you could drink dude that's gonna happen no i, I don't think you can because you still need to override you in case there's like an emergency you still need to be able to yeah. take control of the vehicle so i'd never touch yeah, the wheels so it, it, <laughs> it was more so about like a, a control thing right like having yeah the control mm -hmm. to like and the autonomy to just like be behind the wheel and like you being control right so the reason i was bringing yeah, that up yeah. was because like i feel like women aren't opposed to relinquishing control if whoever the person they're relinquishing control to is solid all the way through yeah right there's a trust i don't think they have an i don't think they have an issue really relinquishing control at all right yeah. Whereas I feel like for men, it's not the same. Yeah. Right? Uh, and so then, I think, again, right. so I, think that's, I think that's when that comes in, when it's like the definition that he posted, where it's like, yeah, that's what's considered like, quote unquote, like a high value. Woman, it, right? uh, yeah. Like but also it, they, it would only match with a it's high, really fault, which is my point, but sorry, go ahead. Which, which would only match with a high value man. Like a high value exactly. woman would only match with a high value man. Like you, you can't. Yeah, you, you, it can't be any other way because the if if it was if like if this man wasn't perceived as high value, there is no trust. There is no like yeah. feeling of like uh, of security from that, you know. And 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 again, I had to say disclaimer. Does it happen for every woman or every man? Like it, every woman or every man? Like it, it, it's very individualized. Uh, I I do think though it's a very I've, I've it's a seen good some people get really lucky general statement oh yeah okay dude here's the thing like i just look at my friend circle you know I like see people out, date people out of their league i'm like damn lucky good for you <laughs> out of their league <laughs> uh, so you're saying though by league completely aesthetic right well no just league is you know like whatever you want to call uh every, you know how every, there's like just like you said people are a high value man is dating a high value woman that's a league whatever that's a you know like okay but just like I see sometimes, you know, like there's people like, wow, how'd you get that? How'd you get that? Girl? Okay, you know, but, like, but it's, is that, is yeah, it usually yeah, a know, guy getting like, a girl thing? Uh, no, I've seen some fucking ugly dudes out there going, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm assuming he's got the big dick or money. So or money. <laughs> but for, for, no, no, that's guy, what I mean. That's yeah, you're I mean. like, how'd you get that? <laughs> yeah, so no, I, that's what I mean. Like, how is, have you seen like dudes that you'd be considered like, what the fuck? Get me with like a, like a yeah. super, you know, yeah i've seen some whatever. good looking dudes going what is he doing with that chick yeah oh, you know but hey oh, okay you know that I've seen too. that for sure that too <laughs> okay I've so seen, you know, i've seen a, i've seen us you know they've been together for a while they've got a funny. good chemistry you know like why you know why question it but you get curious sometimes. no so what i what i've what i've noticed is when whenever that kind of statement ever is said of like wow like out of his league I'm going to specifically go from the woman is out of the guy's league. Yeah, when, Whenever awesome. it's mainly aesthetic. Like we usually just look at the aesthetic of like that girl is so hot. How did that guy get her? Right. And, you know, there's I'm not saying there's a blanket answer for that. Sometimes the guy's just a really solid guy. He's a nice guy. And then like he won her heart. Sometimes the guy is just really successful and has a really good job and has a lot of money or like, you know, like. It, but in in the sense of that statement being made about a male, it's the aesthetic of the woman. But if you hear it from the woman to the man, it's less like it's less frequent. I find where it's about where it's about looks, and and that's a good. I'm glad that you kind of segued into this whole like out of the league thing because that's what hypergamy is. <laughs> I, I, it's good that oh, way. It's a good okay. se segue. What's that word? Hypergamy. Yes. Hypergamy, hypergamy. Hypergamy. Yeah. So it's. I don't know that word. It's basically this. I think this. Uh, I don't know if the right word is uh, like an ideal, but when you marry to raise your status, like you marry oh. in a higher status to raise your own status. 
and it's for like future gen. So like like Pete Davidson trying to beat yeah, Kim Kardashian. I don't know. Well, I don't know <laughs> who's who's the who's the higher one there because like I'm well, okay. I guess she's. Actually, yeah, you know what? Pete Davidson's got a good resume now. So it's it's like, I guess her. he can get anything. Dude, like his lineup, I don't, I don't understand it. But like, oh, his lineup is crazy. There's man. a question right there. How did he? Driving. How did that guy get that girl? And it's like. And so it's like everyone's like, how is he getting? Yeah, how is he getting these women? Right, like they say he's not shy and he's not scared of a rejection. He'll ask people out, but he's in that circle where he's going to be around these people. So take yeah. advantage of it, I guess. Hold on, I'm going to read the uh, the comments here. Uh, Dede said, "Okay, Dede says sometimes the girl has a thing for ugly guys." <laughs> LOL. Uh, and then <laughs> and and then is she really ugly then you could be beautiful inside. And then Mike says looks is less important to girls. It's I agree with that. And then he said the action of marrying or forming a sexual relationship with a person of a superior sociological or educational background. Yes, that's hypergamy. Uh right. I don't so know, that, man. I'd ra- I don't want a girl to date me because um you know I'd rather I want a girl to date me because she thinks I'm good looking. You don't or you do? <laughs> you don't or you do? I do. Yeah, you know? we all want we <laughs> yeah. all want the girl to think yeah. we're hot. Like I want to, uh, uh, at least I do. Like I I want them to be attracted to me. But that's like, like the primal you know, stuff like, is that. Like, you know, you someone says you don't want to date a shallow girl like that. Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> I want her to objectify me. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Uh, so okay, uh, Dede says right. Tell that to Orlando Bloom. Uh, anyone understand that reference? Dede, I don't know. Is it, are, are you saying Orlando Bloom like... Does he have an ugly wife? Did he marry down or marry up? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, K- Kyle says, I see that in anime semi-often. Yeah, true. And not increasing their social status, but marrying a higher social status. Oh, it, it doesn't increase theirs? I mean, doesn't it kind of? Like by by like conclusion anyway but yeah they do they do it uh, as in a sense of like i guess to to gain that security or whatever or to gain that like sense of uh like i I, i'm gonna be taken care of and find someone they can grow old with and that's why it kind of stands with the whole high value man apparently too like a lot of women and okay when i say a lot of women i'm gonna base it on on what we see on social media women so instagram women influencers or the people you see on fresh and fit like i i'll tell you a high like not the the uh definition of this high value woman but if you were to take the definition of a high value man and just change the the word man to woman so like a woman who's really successful driven with her career and like making a lot of money very independent does whatever she wants a woman like that doesn't give a shit about any of this. Like, won't even know anything about this. Doesn't even spend the time to like take part in this like debate because they're they got more important things to deal with their own lives, right? But uh, so when I talk about most women, it's the women that this kind of rhetoric, this kind of discussion, is addressing. So like these, oh man, I don't want to say the word, but. One word that came to my head, like as you would see on uh, on Fresh and Fit, are like the thought, right? Like the the, the thought the, the, <laughs> that type that type of woman. You know, you know what I mean, right, Tom? Like you know, you know thought. T h o t. That hoe over there. Yeah. T- the thought you said. Yeah, yeah. T h o t. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those thoughts. Yeah, yeah. But we want those thoughts. Whoever came over with thought and cap, they gotta go to jail cap so what but no cap like not lying so what's cap again why where did that source from i don't know oh no oh dude but gonna, apparently fb uh, man kevin samuels came out with all these acronyms on that on that thing too where he says fbi feminine beautiful and oh there was another one like uh hold on kevin samuels fbi feminine beautiful and inspirational like uh that's and you know what this is what i've discovered too like women will subscribe to that they will are willing to this relinquish control and i'm not gonna say that those women are automatically thoughts you know or or the are the other ones we're seeing on these uh yeah (laughs) they're not they're not i think a lot of them are just understand like they can yeah, maybe they understand that not their per, like their perceived limitation, 
but like they're they are com- they are comfortable and again it's because with a high value man they feel they feel trust they entrust that they will be taken care of in exchange for whatever kind of value they want to bring for themselves no takip <laughs> for no cap well so if cap there's any bullshit, uh, high yeah. value women here watching your podcast i'm your guy <laughs> I'm trustworthy i'll hold you forever Stop. Mm-hmm. all right it's not a dating ad <laughs> uh, uh, i mean that gotta try okay here's the thing here's my question i like this kind of wrapping around because it's been an hour i kind of want to wrap this up soon is we talked about how as as we are like focused on and developing ourselves we're like career career driven right now we're trying to like establish a healthy balance of like our our work life and our mental health and our emotional health and like our maturity where how much of your focus in the last month has been women <laughs> has it reduced has it reduced like ha- have you feel like you're not been you haven't been like putting the same amount of attention to like trying to find and meet and whatever like in the last month you said yeah because it, it wasn't just it, cod it's gotten better <laughs> it's gotten better what do you mean it's gotten better like your results like oh yeah i'm getting yeah right. yeah i'm getting everyone's in a good mood now that it's spring i'm getting some action oh, it's okay all good. okay it's mood you're basing it on mood <laughs> I thought was oh, like, yeah. I'm getting some <laughs> right i mean everyone's all <laughs> i'm dead i said it's been about the same low key it's just yeah no no it's just like really changed like you're still you're still putting the time and the and the and and like i mean me too uh not to say that like i i'm not i'm not caring about it but in terms of like you know app usage app usage i'll say is is as as diminished for me to the point like yeah like that's not my focus you know yeah, in the last like two, three weeks, it has for me as well. It's not to say that the importance of finding a partner has has lowered it. That's not the case. I'm saying the yeah, search, yeah. the yeah. search has changed. I'm more like, yeah, yeah, I'm busy, and uh, if it comes, great. Like, uh, like it's like, and I'm gonna nurture whatever comes if it's uh, if it's worth it. Like, you know what I mean? But it wasn't gonna be like, okay, my focus and my my goal is to go out there and find someone. And there were times for sure during the pandemic and even like earlier this year where that was that was my goal. I was like, all right, things are going to open up. What was I focused on? All right, I get to go out and like meet people again and like socialize and maybe go to a bar, pick up, maybe pick up uh, some numbers. And I, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, no, not those. But, but in the process of like just just focusing, you know, just being me. And, and the, I, I like that you said that too, JG, like just being unapologetically me, like just being ourselves and not holding back of who we are. And if someone notices, like, that's dope. Like that's that's the point. That's the point because they notice you, right? I got to grab some for two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, what's what's brewing yeah, no, in your definitely. head? Like I think, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things just like you said, like now that you're working more, you're out there you have the propensity to run into just other people <laughs> and then that just changes your whole you know it changes your whole you know game i guess right like you're physically out there running into strangers and meeting people all right I'm gonna... i know i will be in for sure when things start to open up all right let me let me address what mike just said there he says i finally get it only took a couple years this is where i was before the pandemic too like that twenty nine end of twenty nineteen year twenty twenty early, I was already there, and then I had a regression, like a very bad regression in the last two years. Uh, I know you kind of came a little later, but we were talking about like how the pandemic put everything on hold, and when I was forced to be put on hold like that, and I was just and it, all I could do was wait, wait for like the development to to begin again. Uh, I couldn't think about anything else. Well, you know, I I played a lot more COD and I, I found other things to fill my time. But I, I uh, the focus now was on a lot of things that I wanted uh, that that I wasn't 
that I wasn't getting. But the problem was I wasn't busy. Like I wasn't working. Like I wasn't working. I wasn't feeling like I was bettering myself. I stopped working out too. Like the motivation was was missing because I just wasn't like able to work and make money and like build the way I wanted to build. And in just the course of a month, so at the very beginning of this uh, mic, we were talking about like just things opening up March 1st, mask mandate March 21, just in the last like four weeks, all of us have gotten, I'm going to say exponentially busier. Like Tom said that earlier, Deji said that too, it's just, we're just working and I am so busy now. T to the point where I, I don't have a choice, I can't actually think about anything else but work because I'm behind. Like, uh, yeah, that's what we were saying earlier in the pod. So that's the that's the shift. It's not to say that I didn't get it. It's just I, I had nothing else to focus on for the last two years. So I feel like yeah, I'm getting back onto that like stride that I was at before 2020, when well, before March 2020. Two, yeah, two years ago. Uh, it really set me back. And it's nice to be able to, like, bounce back like that. So, yeah, I understood what you meant the whole time. But, dude, like, if you've got nothing going on, if you've got nothing going on, and you're like, oh, just work, focus on yourself, better yourself. But, like, that pandemic took a hit for a lot of people. Too much of anything is it, it's never any good, right? And sitting around, yeah. obviously, for the last two years, too much video gaming and too much... Oh, video man, video. too much COD. <laughs> Too, too much, like... Uh, too much God. But you know, once, just... <laughs> once you get into, like, you know, you're going to be busy, the littlest things, you know, you're going to get a piece, like, you're going to get a nice bounce and a piece of everything. And Dude, be, like, I'm like looking... Not wasting I'm looking forward to, like, next week, weekend, where I can play some COD. <laughs> like, I'm, like, in a... Before, I was like, I guess I can play <laughs> COD again tonight. Oh, here's some, my nightly COD thing, you know? And it was, it was becoming... Yeah. Not that I resented COD, but I, I missed, you know, the social aspect of COD. But I just, I would go to play because that's what I do at night, late at yeah. night, when I got nothing else to do. But now I have no time to play. So I'm looking forward to when I can play again and have fun and then, like, shoot some shoot some guns and kill some bots and whatever, or kill some people and socialize again, you know? <laughs> False Tom can never have yeah. too much cash. They, they say uh, you, you can never have too much cash. That's what he's saying. I guess that's Ballin'. true. <laughs> For sure. I wouldn't throw it away. I wouldn't throw it away. <laughs> anyway, any, you guys have any like kind of Fresh final street. send off thoughts for this week? I think that was, that was a cool kind of wrap up. Uh, it's been an hour. It's been uh, an hour and seven minutes. This no. is pretty good. Yeah. I'd say guys like be excited for those watching. If you did feel like the last two years was holding you back, be excited because yeah. Because, like, take advantage the of the fact come that, to those that who well, that and you and those who don't who don't settle, and who don't be complacent about life too. Is Canada massless now? Uh, for the most part, yes, day day, but uh, it's dependent. The facility can still decide if they want to enforce or like uh, uh, advise to still wear it. Um, here's the thing, though. Uh, I shot today, and apparently, uh, our numbers are. You said you just said day 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 G that. Uh, you had a outbreak like numbers are going up again yeah. right people are like freaking yeah. out a little bit i don't think that's going to cause another shutdown i that's my optimism maybe but i don't think we're gonna go through another f closing phase uh oh, things boy. might slow down a little bit maybe capacities might shift you know maybe from like 100 people maybe that number are might we at we're not at full capacity. No, we are not. Are, we are, are we? I don't know. Like, I, I don't think so. Right? I don't think technically. No, no, we're not at full capacity. Even though people aren't really following. But, but I don't think they're going to be closing restaurants again. You know, like uh, I don't see that happening. I, I I hope not. For I just really hope not because it doesn't make a difference. Restaurants is not the answer. Uh, gyms and stuff. I again. I maybe they'll play around with uh, capacities, but I don't see anything closing down in the near future. Hopefully. And yeah, just like good luck with everybody out there trying yeah. to get back their life and work. Uh, yeah. It was yeah, nice be to be a high value human. Yeah, let's all be high value humans. Humans. Everybody try to be as high value as you can. Yes. <laughs> just work yourself, on it. Just man. focus on yourself. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it. I, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm blessed that uh, 
I'm finally getting a lot of work. And yeah, I'm happy to hear you guys are also on that same train, man. That's wicked. But yeah. Sure. Peace out, guys. We'll see you next Thursday. Again, 11 p.m. I'm trying to make these shorter. Hopefully, it'll provide some kind of insight for you guys, or at least like a, pers a perspective that you guys might not be thinking on your own. Uh, Bratcast uh, is at 11 p.m. Eastern on here, Twitch. I'll put up the VOD on YouTube. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when the next one comes out. Usually, I, I release each uh, VOD by the next day. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Deji, for coming. All the and thanks for chat. Guys, thank you just for taking part in chat. I really appreciate that, too. Miss you guys on the pod. So if you guys can ever come out, I, 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 that would be great, too. Tell your friends about me. Yeah, yeah. Fire Pit, Wednesdays. Check out Fire Pit on Wednesdays. Uh, oh, no, that's just a quote from Chris Tucker in my shower. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah literally. La latest news, yeah. uh, Will Smith and Jada. Jada says uh, she wish he didn't slap Chris Rock. <laughs> Damn. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh.